we're thinking about that gluten could be the problem. So do go see your doctor, but what the doctor is probably going to ask you to do is to test it out with a gluten-free diet to see if the mm -hmm. symptoms then resolve. Okay, so there is no simple blood test for this. That's right. The best way to figure out if you got a problem with gluten is to do what we're about to teach you about. So walk me through a gluten-free diet. What's the best way to do it? Okay, there's just three things that you need to be concerned about. Wheat, rye, and barley. Now, those are the foods that contain the gluten. The problem is that traces of them can be in a lot of other foods. You go online and you see the thousand things you have to avoid if you go crazy. So let me make it easy on you. Please do. Any food that is just one ingredient does not have gluten in it. If it's something like broccoli or grapefruit or all the fruits, the lentils and so forth, you know exactly what's in it. There's no ingredient label. It's going to be easy for you to be gluten-free. So let's walk through these. This is not a deprivation diet. I can tell you, you'll lose weight on a gluten-free diet if you do it the right way. Do it the wrong way, you're probably gaining weight. So single ingredient products, generally speaking, are good for you. We talked about produce, uh, meat, and fish are fine. Le you know, dairy is, is, is reasonable as well. Uh, lentils, nuts, r uh, rice, corn, and of course, you get to have chocolate. Is that good news? <laughs> you, know about that. you can have that thing that you want to have and still be gluten free and not be torturing your intestinal system, uh, you know, creating these little wildfires that you got to put out all the time. Now. Let's talk about gluten-free products. I started this program talking about the $6 billion we spend on these. I see them everywhere. I have major concerns about these, but you're the world expert in this well, area, so teach us. It's a huge market out there, and marketing is, is unfortunately a big part of it. Now, they are convenient, but many of them have more sugar added. they got more calories than you need. Some have had the fiber removed. You don't necessarily need to go that route. Can I speak clearly on this thing, from my personal opinion? Getting G-free, gluten-free foods is a bad idea if you have a gluten-friendly gut. Because you don't need to go there. You don't need to pay a price. And that's often what you're doing to get that trade off. It's a mediocre idea, I think, actually, oftentimes, if you're gluten sensitive. Because there are better ways of getting any of those, di those dietary needs that you have into your, uh, your, your daily regimen. So if you want to eliminate gluten from your diet and you want to get some advice from a professional, how do you find the right kind of doctor to give you that advice? Well, you should start with your primary care doctor. Now, they vary a lot. Some are up to speed. Others need to be pushed a little bit. Sooner or later, they are going to refer you to a gastroenterologist who can do the specialized testing. Right. So you can, you can find those. You ask these questions. Be brave about this. Go in there and say, do you, you know a lot about gluten ideas with regard to my diet? Are you an integrative gastroenterologist? You can use some keywords and push a little bit to make sure you make some space for yourself because it's your body you're protecting. And again, we're in the medical field, we're a little behind the times on this. If you've got those symptoms you talked about, show up in your own life. Okay? Thank you very much. You'll appreciate it always. Coming up, the best health tickets from the web.